I wanted to get a sense of how wide a kerf, a laser cutter, cuts. So I had this simple little test piece cut at the University of New Brunswick's uh, Makerspace Lab laser cutter. And looking at this, let's talk about laser cutter inaccuracies. This plywood didn't actually cut all the way through, but it was a terrible piece of scrap and it delaminated. So for our purposes, that's good enough. I uh, cut this box joint so I could see how much wiggle room I'd get to get a sense of how much kerf I've got. So if I put the dial indicator on there and now move it back and forth, you can see the needle moves by 20 thou. That's about half a millimeter. So I've got half a millimeter worth of kerf here, but if I flip this piece over and try that same test again, now I have about 35 thou worth of movement that's about uh, 0.9 millimeters and that's because this laser cut is actually tapered so in a laser cutter the laser is typically somewhere in the back and it's reflected through a series of mirrors comes through the lens here and then it gets focused down the laser beam actually does have a certain width of I don't know a few millimeters and it doesn't get focused down to something very narrow until it hits the lens and ideally it's focused so that uh, it converges in the middle of the stock so that maybe you get a little bit of skew on the top and the bottom as the laser beam gets narrow and then diverges again after it hits the focus. In this case, the laser beam was actually focused more on the bottom of the stock so that the uh, cut width is a lot wider on the top than it is on the bottom. It's also a matter that this was not fully tweaked. I did another test of kerf width by just cutting a uh, wedge into here and that has a slope of 5 to 1. And so if I push this wedge in here, the amount that it goes in further is five times what the kerf width is. So here, that's actually not too bad. Uh, it's a little bit less than a millimeter that it goes further in. But if I pull it out and I put it in upside down, it goes in about twice as far as it did before. And again, that's because of the uh, tapered kerf the laser cut wider on the top than on the bottom which means this wedge shaped slot is wider on top than bottom and this wedge is narrower on the top than the bottom so if I flip this upside down I put the uh, wide side where the wide is and then there where the narrow is and it goes in a fair bit further than it did before about twice as far now another thing that the guy running the laser pointed out that might be a problem sometimes is if the laser is not perfectly lined up it will hit the lens not dead center for instance here it's hitting it towards the right and then the lens still focuses it towards a point and that means the laser instead of coming straight down here is actually coming at a slight angle which in this case for instance you could get a completely vertical cut on one side and much more of a skew on the other side and checking over my sample that turns out to be a problem with this laser as well so if I hold a pencil in there and hold it up against the uh, kerf on one side I get about this angle and on the other side I get this angle so it's angled like this a little bit and doing it here I get about uh, perpendicular here and on the other side quite a bit of skew which tells me the laser was not perfectly lined up in terms of the laser hitting the center of the lens and just another thing, looking at the back of this box joint, the uh, kerf on here is very narrow and it didn't go through everywhere, which is why this part uh, delaminated instead of breaking off properly. And I'd need an X-Acto knife to separate those pieces. But the cut width on here, you can see, is very narrow, whereas up here, there's quite a bit of material that was cut away. And there's one more problem that can happen with a laser cutter, and that's that the gantries are slightly misaligned. This happened on some of the pantorotor templates, where you think you're cutting something like this, but you're actually cutting something like this, although this is way exaggerated. The problem was so subtle that just looking at it by eye, you couldn't tell there was a problem. The way that this problem can come about is you have the uh, lens and mirror thing here, and that moves along here with the timing belt and then both sides of this gantry are moved up and down with separate timing belts and usually separate motors. Now as long as these two sides are perfectly aligned 
that works fine, but if one side is just a little bit like this, then as this moves along, it still moves vertically, but as this moves, it doesn't actually move side to side. So instead of cutting a square, you end up cutting something that looks a little bit like this. Again, way exaggerated. The problem that I had seen, I think this side and this side were out of line by maybe a millimeter, maybe two. So just looking at it, you really couldn't see a problem. Now, none of this matters if you use your laser cutter for typical laser things, like engraving decorative things or cutting out letters, that sort of thing. But uh, if you're trying to make a project that uses plywood and does joinery, then it matters.